Alrighty, so today we're going to talk about an issue um, pertaining to the men, the international men that will be traveling to America to study. Now, there are some um, specific facts that I want to detail for our male listeners, and I'm going to do actually one for females soon as well. We're going to do something for the ladies. We're also going to do something for the men. But today we're going to do something for the men. Now, I think that, uh, you know, even as the world has changed and there's really no difference between men and women, there's still specific things that I think based on gender and uh, and how you move and things like that, that each um, has their own unique set of circumstances and ways to do things. Stop complaining. This is a man's game. All right? yeah. So I think the important thing to understand is that as a man coming to America, you know, um, even when you're coming through customs and going through certain places, uh, you may actually find out that it may be a little bit easier for you coming through as a man than it is as a woman. Unfortunately, there are still some inequalities that exist, even in quote unquote developed countries that as a man and a woman, you're going to notice. Now, with men, you do have to understand that, you know, that. This can be daunting and a big task even for uh, the strongest of men uh, because sometimes even the strongest of men are coming from these countries and these homes that are still family oriented and basically very, very close knit. When you come to America, you might not have that. So you may think that you're big and strong, but then when you come here, you find out it's a different set of mental stress here. All right. Now, it's important as a young man or even as an older man that when you come to America, that you, there are going to be some differences. There are going to be some differences in the way things are done, the way things are going on in school and even the way things are going on at home. Now, sometimes I've noticed a lot of students, they come to America and they don't have their family with them. So that's extremely hard for some men that might actually have a family and children. They're studying in America, but on top of that, they're still financially responsible for their families back home, or at least they're heavily contributing. It's nothing worse than being a man in school and having to take care of your family, or having to put food on the table. And that can be stressful. And it can be so much stress that it can send you home. All right. So you really have to be careful when you're going on that note. Secondly, even as a young man or as an older man, we still have parents. So you have a mother or an aunt or an uncle or a father that's worried about you. I remember specifically back in the days around the times during the September 11th when most of you guys weren't even born. There were a lot of students that were studying in America from the Middle East and from Africa. And when the tragic events of September 11th happened, uh, you know, a lot of their family called for them to come back home because they were scared. So now you have a young man who was away from home and his parents are worried about him. His um, his aunties, his uncles worried about him. So now he feels he has to come back home and handle that situation and deal with it. I think in terms of schooling, it's very important for you to really have a grip on what you want to do and where you want to study. Here's the reason why I say that. We do have a lot of young men who come and maybe they have a family or you have some men that might get married while they're in school. With this being said, you want to make sure that you're moving to a place that is, let's say, conducive for your family. So let's say, for example, if you're going to a school in Alaska, <laughs> I keep saying Alaska because I like talking about Alaska, as opposed to a school maybe in Los Angeles, which is a cosmopolitan um, cosmopolitan. A city with a lot of people around, then, you know, that might be easier than, for example, having your wife up in Alaska with polar bears and things like that. I'm just saying. And especially for some of you students coming to the country that might come from more traditional type societies, uh, you know, it may be a little bit harder for your wife to get used to what's going on here and even for your children to get used to what's going on here. So let's say, for example, if you're coming maybe from Saudi Arabia, you're coming from Sudan or you're coming from even some places in Europe where it's a little bit more traditional, not as modern as America, there may be a bit of a shock for your family when they come here. And it's even a bit of a shock for men when they come here, because what thing that happens in America is that there's an unlimited amount of freedom. And even though people think that freedom is good, freedom could be bad because if you're if you're not used to it, you can get pretty much dragged into a funny situation. So let's say, for example, if um, there's some restrictions that are in your home country that aren't here, if you can't control yourself, you could easily fall into a lot of trouble here in America if you're not disciplined. So the key word today is being disciplined and making sure that you're disciplined and whatever you're doing. 
Now, if you plan on being in America for some time, maybe some people plan on coming here for undergrad, graduate, or even possibly even, you know, um, transferring here again, citizenship to, citizenship to America, you want to make sure that you're looking at all, all the cities that are here, all the states that you feel is going to be conducive for you and for you to live. So wherever you go to university, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to live there. You may go to university in New York and then end up working in Chicago or go to school in Chicago and end up working in Los Angeles. But at the same time, these are areas you want to start studying before you maybe, you know, you graduate and you get offered a job at a certain place and you don't even know where it is. Uh, you don't want to get a job in a place where you're going to be miserable there. And I know that sometimes as men, we're expected to be strong and we're expected to be hard and we're expected to be tough. But, you know, we have mental issues as well. And if we're not being, you know, if we're not being honest and true to our mental condition, we could actually put ourselves in more trouble because, you know, we don't really reach out and talk to a lot of people. All right. So you want to make sure that you're in one of these environments which is going to be conducive for you. Remember, and I always tell a lot of young men and older men, you know, perhaps you're going back to your country and you're going back to a country where it's a traditional country where, you know, the men are expected to take care of your family and everything else like that. That's a heavy burden. I met a student one time where his whole goal was to go back and send his little brothers and sisters back to school. So not only was he a student, he was a provider and his parents were elderly. So he was dealing with a lot of those things as well. So there's a lot of pressure on us to maintain and to succeed. And, you know, and as an international student, you know from your country what some of those pressures are. You know what you have to deal with. You understand what that is. No one else can tell you what it is. Sometimes you run into some American students, some people from here, and I will say, oh, it's okay, you need to do this, and I don't understand why it's like that, and this is not whatever. Hey, guess what, buddy? You're not from my country. You're not from my culture, all right? So you can't let a bunch of people that are kind of privileged, you know, tell you how it is, because maybe you're from a country or a place where it, you're not privileged or where you are the sole provider of your family or you are the head of your household, the head of your tribe. A bunch of things like that. So we have to be realistic when we're looking at that. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you feel about this. Uh, I really feel that it's important as men, young men and older men, you know, our circumstances are special when we're traveling to another country. And I want you guys to be aware of that, that, you know, we still have to be, uh, you know, we have to be strong and we have to be supportive of our families and everybody else around us and as men sometimes we're expected to be superman expected to be superman we're expected to do everything and sometimes those heavy burdens on our shoulders uh can really cause a lot of stress and this is an area that i even deal with in my profession because as men like you said uh we're expected to be just uh handle everything and be strong and don't worry about it and don't be weak but there is a time where we do need someone to talk to we do need to lean on somebody so it's important to have a strong support network whether it's you know uh your family back home or your adoptive family here either way you have to make sure that you have an outlet to um to express yourself now you also know why it's severely important to make sure that mentally you understand where you are before you get on a plane and come to america all right. Know what your shortcomings are, know what you need to work on and know what triggers you and what doesn't know where your strengths are and your weaknesses. Once you identify these in the beginning, then it's going to be much easier when you make your trip. So this is why I always put into my workshops a section where people are going to be able to figure out what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are. And that doesn't require a therapist or a bunch of sessions sitting on a couch telling somebody your business. But it's really just a point where we need to start figuring around our patterns, what are our strengths and our weaknesses and how to work against it. What happens when we are stressed out? All right. Are we going to work with the stress? Or are we going to work against the stress? We're going to push back on that stress. All right. But we need to know when do I get stressful? Why do I get stressful? These are questions that we could ask before the crisis. I'm all about uh, pre preliminary um, pre preliminary uh, care before it actually happens. So let's not wait until we fall out or until we get stressed out, until we have a breakdown. Because you will most likely have a breakdown when you're away from a place you've never been with before, been uh, to before. But the major thing is, how can you deal with that in an orderly fashion without going crazy? That's very important. So these are some things that we're going to look at. That's
That's the way you talk to your son. <laughs>